So Jurgen Klopp says uh, they made us look like butchers on the back page of the Irish Independent. Um, story there about Ron O'Gara, I'm ready for Ireland's call. That is, uh, for Ireland's call rather, um, that is an interview he did with Sinead Kassan yesterday where he said, look, one, one phone call can change things. And if that phone call comes, then um, he'd have to think about it. Uh, obviously, he's in Crusaders contracted up until at least the end of the uh, Rugby World Cup. And then, obviously, Andy Farrell will be looking for uh, his team. Maybe Andy Farrell has a team already in mind. Maybe O'Gara is part of that. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, the other one there is Leinster defend early start to pre-season competition. So, um, GA politics is about to explode in the next couple of weeks. And we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, Vincent Hogan's piece inside is asking, can Robbie teach anybody to play? Um, which is a good question, right? This is kind of the, the nub of the whole, what is Robbie doing? Yeah. Robbie wants to be a manager hmm. and has managed to convince uh, the FAI slash Mick McCarthy that he should be part of this. I mean, he's not going to have a central role, so it's not that important a job. It's not like he's the second in command. TC is the coach yeah. on, on the pitch doing all that stuff. Robbie's just an extra body. Yeah, I mean, he's there to learn, essentially. That seems to be part of it. But also, there's, there's, there's mixed, not mixed messages, but, I mean, Rude Doctor's in some of the papers today uh, speaking about, you know, how Robbie is passionate about underage levels as well and might be going to matches at under 13, under 15 level. Uh, John Delaney the other day and both Mick McCarthy alluded to the, not quite fact, but possibility where Robbie will be part of the succession plan too, so that post-2020 he may still be involved in Stephen right. Kenny's team or in some shape or form. So it's clear that the, Robbie's been earmarked for a view in the future, um, but there's a debate over, well, how good a coach will Robbie actually be? We just don't know. And Vincent Hogan's point, I think, the piece is a decent piece talking about, like, he has a sort of an instinctive, he always had an instinctive ability, a genius, and how do you translate that to coaching? And that's, that's the eternal challenge for the great players when they, can they actually explain what, you know, what, what it was that made them great? Yeah. I'd say Robbie had no intention of helping anybody when he was a player to learn what it was that he was doing. Now that he's like officially formally retired, and we'll talk about his career in a couple of minutes' time, that maybe he'll actually be willing to explain where the feints were coming from, where the movement was, why the not moving was part of his game. Who knows? Yeah, well, he, ha he has been training with Shamrock Rovers on and off for the last uh, sort of 18 months or so in or around his stay in India. And I know going to sort of Shamrock Rovers gigs and, you know, Stephen Bradley, the manager, would speak about how Robbie would occasionally give the strikers a bit of a, um, you know, a drill. And I sp spoke to one or two of the Rovers players who said, you know, Robbie was very helpful to them just trying yeah. to explain movements and stuff. But it's still, you know, that, that's grand when it's a favour almost. It's a bonus. Whereas yeah. now there's going to be there'll be stuff coming out about how good or not he is. Yeah. So we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Like, uh, part of me wonders if, uh, so, you know, somebody was making the point, oh, it's not work experience, it's the senior international team. But, like, the senior international team always put players in for friendlies who weren't getting, mm. like, Mick McCarthy famously would have given Alan Kelly matches when he wasn't getting games at club level to try and get him a low move. And I don't think anybody has any problems with that, per se. I mean, Dean Kiley might have had some problems with that. Yeah. But uh, ordinarily, it's like, you know, we're trying to improve the opportunity for everybody involved in Irish football. And I'm not saying it is work experience, but is it the worst thing for us to have players like this in the system? If the Kenny and Keith Andrews experiment had actually worked and they'd been more embedded, then this would have been a continuation of that. The plan isn't quite working, but the plan's not necessarily a bad one. Yeah, I think, I think one of the problems we have in football here is just because we don't have a full-time industry here, that there's just not enough jobs, you know, to keep people in the game. And I think the argument is that Mick McCarthy's going for two coaches. Now, under the previous regime, there was maybe, there was Guppy, Walford, there was a lot of coaches. Yeah. You, but I, you might have envisaged maybe one more coach being involved in this setup. Say the names that have been mentioned, like Lee Carsley or Stephen Reid, who, as far as I know, weren't approached in any way. Uh, and the argument would be, well, should one of them not be sort of part of this setup, and then Robbie too, in some, you know, in some degree, learning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't done his pro licence yet, which is, the, in theory, the fully qualified elite level coaching thing, and doctors defending the, 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 the argument that it's sending out the wrong message by getting Robbie in such a plum role uh, without having even gone through that process. Yeah, okay, so, um, fair enough. It's definitely uh, swings and roundabouts when it comes to that. So the Sports Thursday in the Irish Times, Liverpool and Last Chance Saloon as away woes go on. Um, yeah, that's the picture of Neymar that we've all come to know and love. And then, uh, Doctor says FAI's new succession plan is a logical step. Um, high performance director confident new plan can lead to a bright future. That's Emmett Malone's piece with 
Rude Dufter. Um, and then obviously Christian Eriksen scored late for Spurs at Wembley against Inter to keep alive their chances of qualifying. Um, will be interesting. That'll be a decent game anyway to count now as opposed to a dead rubber. And then the Irish Times uh, have their version of the story about the uh, dead Bally Brack player, Lazarus like, risen from the dead. Um, <clears throat> back of the Times Ireland edition, down to the wire, that's uh, Virgil van Dijk and Harry Kane. Van Dijk not happy, Harry Kane, hard to tell, but I presume pretty happy. And then Keane hailed by McCarthy. Mick McCarthy has lauded the career of Robbie Keane. We'll do the same in a couple of minutes' time. And then players in the dark over rule changes. This is the... Uh, the inter-county football teams will be in the dark about the exact playing rules for the National League until a week before the competition begins. This is um, an interesting take from Paul Keane in the Times. Uh, the GPA issued a strongly worded statement saying that they wanted proper consultation with the GAA. They had a meeting with the GAA yesterday and the GAA said, oh, don't worry about these new rules. They're only going to be in for the um, league if we ratify them after we go through the pre-season tournaments. So we'll say, yeah, now. And then we have another chance to say no before the league starts. So there's a last minute, there's a, there's a get out clause. Yeah. Now I wonder if that's like hmm. a, oh, don't worry lads, we can, we can always, if it's rubbish we'll change them. But like, we're not changing them. But that's just giving people time to familiarise themselves yeah. a bit more and without, without believing it's imminent, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I think um, it's, a, I would say, an Irish solution to an Irish problem. I had that and phrase around the world <clears> in the last week or so, I think. Um, yeah, so pantomime villain. Neymar stars as PSG CF Liverpool, Spurs win, takes fight to the last day. And then um, Park Fanning fumes at Daisha training camp punishment. This is the various uh, counties who have all been punished and the other counties who did the exact same thing but haven't been punished. It would lead to a sense of unfairness, generally. Um, and then <coughs> Golo Kante got absolutely hammered by Mauricio Sarri. Yeah, so that's in a few other places. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, about trying to solve the match in the first 15 minutes against Spurs sort of suggesting he lacked discipline or positional discipline in the game, which is not usually a, a, a criticism you hear sort of, sort of levelled in his direction. Or in public. Yeah, I don't know. manager of their best player who's just signed a new £75 million pounds contract. You see, you always try and uh, believe that this is part of some kind of psychology or mind games, or did he just like catch him at the wrong but moment I, and just say that? Yeah. He's actually been, been annoying me all week. Um, but it, it's, I don't know, Sarri's actually... He's sort of not been involved in any re anything like this that much since he's come in, unless I've missed it. You know, he no. hasn't necessarily been sort of a magnet for any kind of controversy, but I guess there comes a time where his every comment now will be scrutinised. Completely under the radar, really. Yeah, he's actually managed it pretty impressively. Um, I guess after you get beaten in a big game like that, it's a London derby, you want to come out and say something, but is he not responsible for Kante playing in the wrong position? Yeah, yeah I would have thought so. I mean, I know he's an experienced player, um, I don't it's, know. it's essentially a slightly forward midfield, but still midfield. Like, yeah. do just just be more involved. I suppose though, it is like it's a tactical analysis rather than a sort of a, a slight on his personality. You know, yeah. like you want managers to come out and talk about the game and what happened and who could have done what without it becoming a massive deal. But I guess so. You know, what type of sort of comment do we want from managers then? You know, if they if they shy away from that, then you're not getting anything of any real insight at all. Yeah, it's true. But, and so this is the last time basically we're ever going to hear him say. <laughs> now in the future, everyone just, did well. Everyone yeah, did well. Yeah. Oh, they were all excellent. They all have lovely bottoms. Okay, so the back page of the uh, sorry, front page of the Telegraph Sports section is obviously the picture of uh, Neymar and Mbappe, but also they've got a story about Tyson Fury. Tyson's victory. Fury takes to the streets to win over the hearts of LA. There is a sense that. Um, that fight hasn't really gripped America just yet. We'll get to that a little bit later with uh, Brynjolf and the Butler. Yeah, so we have the, the, the tabloids today. Now beat Barca on the back page of the Mail. It's pretty straightforward, uh, laying out the the challenge that uh, that Spurs, they need to uh, go there and win, basically. And also there's a GPA line, GPA victory in GEA's U-turn on rules review. As you mentioned, the, you can, it seems like you can spin that story or present it in several different ways. Yeah, and look, maybe, maybe, the, maybe it's just good politics from the G, GAA president to go, yeah, come on in, here's the story, we'll issue a statement afterwards, fair enough, we'll talk to you more in advance next time. Maybe it's just a growing it's maturity. It's maturity, like. yeah. Maybe. We'll see. The Sun, then, we have Chris of Life. You can see what they did, of course, with uh, Christian Eriksen again on the back page. And then a bit of Neymar to the side as well. That N'Golo Kante story and uh, Robbie Keane at the top. It's, it's interesting, like a few pa papers have gone for Spurs on the back, whereas I would have thought, you know, in some ways, like the Irish market, Liverpool is the, the massive deal. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but I don't know, it's just the way it goes sometimes when you're 
I don't know, late, late at night when late calls to be made. I'd say know? the 7.45 and the 8 o'clock kickoff is a big difference for papers going to print, right? Yeah, it would be, yeah, 8 o'clock would make it pretty tight, yeah, and obviously the, in the end of there was a Klopp quote, that would be a slightly later edition, you know, when you actually get the, the actual Klopp the quote, reaction yeah. to it. Was yeah. there an, what time is the first paper going to print? Oh, generally our, our first edition, and every paper is different, but we would have one that would go around that sort of half nine, quarter to ten oh, territory, no. <laughs> which would, would be the one that would go to... You think Liverpool might be about to go Yeah, here. well, generally, when there's a big match night, you wait for the, you know, you wait for the games, but that, that, that might be the first edition that goes to England and right. stuff like that, and okay. some of the promotional copies and stuff that people might see in coffee shops and that type of thing. But, uh, yeah, so it is, it is a tight one, but, I mean, to me, Liverpool is... The, the bigger Irish market and the mirror against all odds is actually a good back page because it manages to incorporate both of them with uh, Salah on one side and Ericsson on the other and both of them I suppose have to win on the last day and also I'm a calamity get me out of here at the top which is John Cross there uh, with Alexis Sanchez topically wanting to get out of Manchester United I don't think he wants to actually go and join Harry Randolph in the jungle or have somewhere. Have you watched any of Harry in the jungle? I haven't, no. Oh, I haven't no, it's, it, this is the problem with the Irish football's crisis that I've missed the chess and Harry Redknapp in the jungle and the Spain New Zealand under 17. There you go, yeah. So, like, there's, there's been a lot going on in the world that I've, I've missed out on. Uh, and then the star, you have uh, Tough at the Cop as well with uh, Virgil van Dijk there looking pretty uh, downbeat after the and Christian Saviour for Spurs at the bottom. And yeah, the GEA and Robbie Keane. I mean, Robbie Keane is sort of everywhere. And then the Herald, finally, it's Napoli or bust for Reds after the Paris nightmare. Um, and a few Anthony Martial comments as well. So there we go. Finished 2 0, I just checked it there. So the uh, Spain beat New Zealand 2 0 in Montevideo last night. Oh, Montevideo, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Uh, venue. No, pretty glamorous, right? Like mm. having it in Uruguay. A bit random. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's been such great football history there. Because I went to Uruguay like six or seven years ago. Of course, the first World Cup final was there. Yeah. And you can, there's still like. I, at the, the same stadium. Yeah, this, this, there's a, like a museum at the stadium. It's a st Stadio Centenario, I think, or something. And, and uh, they still have, because like, obviously 1950 World Cup was, was there. No, the it was in Brazil, sorry, but Uruguay won the World Cup in 50. So the museum is part um, relics from 1930 and then also some stuff from the 1950 Uruguay team, like the match ball. And, yeah. you know, there's pictures of all the, the first, um, you know, all the, the teams arriving in Uruguay and stuff, the first teams that actually competed. Because it was almost invitational, yeah. that first World, Cur World Cup. But that's why, you know, in the context of this 2030 World Cup bid, that Ireland are sort of part of this feasibility. And it does seem like they're probably going to crack ahead. Now, I know the, the crowd trouble in Argentina, there's an argument that it might uh, trouble their bid, but this Argentina-Uruguay-Paraguay bid oh, is, probably the, okay. is probably the main rival, it's probably the favourite, because of the symbolism of 100 years on, going back to the region where it all began. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that could well be the story over the next couple of years. We're going to have to find a negative and bring it back to where it all began, which is actually probably a great idea. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but just well. with, we need to go to Argentina, we need to go to Paraguay, and yeah. we need to go to Montevideo. We're, we're here in the ruins of Montevideo. Look at this place. There's no way they could possibly host a World Cup. Yeah, exactly, kind of which is actually, well, it probably is the perfect place to go. But still, we'll all get on board, get our green hats on. Yeah.